Hello, everybody. It's a happy Thursday. This is the Witty Writers Show. I'm Beth Wersdale, author, and I am here with the absolutely fabulous Helen Holder. Hello, Helen. How are you, darling? I'm fine. Everybody, this is Helen Holder. She is the most fantastic children's author um, for Fox Point Publishing, and her books are absolutely beautiful. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Helen. I've got so many messages and comments popping up on our screen already, so if, you, if it's okay with you, we'll say hello to some people. Let's have a look. Um, so Carly's joined us. She was panicking. Hello there. Don't see Helen just yet. <laughs> But we got her back, Carly. Thank you for joining us, darling. Um, we've also got Marcy, who's joined us. Hello, Marcy. Look, and she was waiting for you, Helen. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it's so sweet. She really is. She's lovely. Uh, Denise has just joined us as well. She says, hey. And we've got Leanna from Australia. She said, good morning. It's Hi. morning, her end, and she's, she's, um, she's in sunny, very sunny, hot Australia. Um, and Kirsten says, fun with computers. Yeah. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> now, panic over here. <laughs> no, right. So Kirsten actually runs and owns Fox Point Publishing. Uh, yes. She's absolutely fantastic. She really, really is. And she's an author herself, so everybody check her out as well. Um, I've been so excited for you to join me, Helen, because your, your books are absolutely Beautiful. Now, I want to go back in time um, because from what I've read and researched about you, um, you had a very clear plan about what you wanted to do <laughs> at an early age as a career, which was teaching. Well, yes, I knew from third grade on that that was exactly what I was going to do. And that's what I did for my career. But I also thought I wanted to be an artist and, a, and an author. And that sort of fell through. <laughs> I feel like the kindred spirits, Helen, because I, I'm a multi, multi artistic person myself. Um, so like you, I, I you know, I have quite a lot of passion for various arts and everything. Um, but going into a teaching career, I mean, my gosh, that must have been so interesting because you did it for over 30 years. Yep. I had first grade every year. Well, some days, yeah. I, some years I had a combination at first and second graders, but most of the time it was just first grade. And that my my thing was the kindergarten teacher has already trained them, and they still love their teacher no matter what she does. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> now I would imagine over a thirty year plus career span in teaching, you must have seen massive changes. Um, in, in the children that you taught, um, obviously as technology grew and grew, you must have had lots of adjustments as well as a teacher. Um, do you think all that experience has actually given you quite a big advantage or helped you to become a children's author? Well, of course, being a first grade teacher, I'm reading lots of children's literature all the time. So that's a big help because I think any writer needs to be a really big reader. And then just just for the it's for the kids, you know what kids like and, and besides that they say things that give you ideas to write a story about. So there you go. <laughs> Don't kids come out with the funniest things? Oh yeah. I, do you know what, Helen? I'm sure you could just write a book all about the funny things that kids have said to you over the years. Um, I mean, I, I've got four children myself and the things that they came out with, oh my gosh. Uh, I mean, hilarious. What actually gave you the the oomph to think, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to write children's books. Well, I had written lots of them before and I'd actually printed some off and illustrated them myself to send to my family. But I know like to give it to a few other people to share with them. And, but, and then I was trying to self-publish, but that's a little bit harder with children's books because most of the self-publishing are set up for your great American novel. So I was just struggling around with trying to get my pictures printed off and for, the, for one book. And, and 
then I saw this person that I knew that had, was, had been published by Fox Point Publishing. And I thought, oh, they're right here in Austin. So I called up, well, I emailed Kirsten and um, we set up an appointment in last March or a year ago in, um, right before everything shut up and we came back and had breakfast together. And I said, well, I have this book that I would like to publish. And so they were, Kirsten and her daughter, Chelsea, were really excited about that. And then I said, well, and I have these other man, you know, manuscripts too. And they said, oh, we'll take them all. So, <laughs> so then they took them all and I had one coming out every month, July through January. That's just fantastic. And I love the fact that they did that for you and published them in quick succession because as you know, being a, you know, an ex-teacher, I know you've got you know lo lo lots of grandchildren as well. Um, when kids attach themselves to a type of book, an author or a character, they just want to read one after the other, after the other, after the other, don't they? So what a smart move that really, <laughs> really was. And how exciting, it! I mean, it, it feels like fate. Oh yeah, it just does. And then, then I think, oh my goodness, I have to learn all this new stuff about, because you're really a, you're really a business. And so who knew that I'd have to learn about sales tax and being a business and, keeping records and inventory and who knows what else. I hope I got it all. <laughs> I know, isn't it crazy for, for, for the authors that are watching um, or the, you know, the new authors that are about to publish, it is quite a, a, a big event, life event when you go to publishing, because you're right, you've got so much to try and take on board and learn and be organized with. Um, but just for our, children's authors that might be watching um if you do decide to self-publish if you if you go down that route um kdp actually has a free um app that you can download to your ipad to actually publish children's books so it's completely separate from normal novels um and it's it enables you to upload your pictures and everything else so just so everybody else knows if you're if you do go down that route, there are still helpful options and KDP has a lot of them. So that's quite quite a benefit. Um, we've got more comments and everything popping up. Um, we've also got Fra uh, Francisco Xavier, who's joined us. He says, hi. Thank you for watching, my darling. And um, Leanna says, the stories you could tell being a teacher for so long would have helped write your children's books so do you think they've made quite a big impact on your books helen your oh, experience yeah so so th this one terrific tongues was came from just one comment mm -hmm. that, a, that a child made when we were having a conversation and um uh, my grandchildren do the arrest of them so <laughs> but just just the things that they've said and and just fun things that you know about kindergarten or first graders, that age group is really helpful for anything you want to write. And so honest that it just comes out, doesn't it? They just say what they think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could we have another look at your book cover, Helen? Because it's beautiful. Uh, in well, in let's see, that one was terrific. Time. Yeah. There's well, so and that's one of the things. Look at that. I don't feel, I don't feel capable of drawing pictures like this. This is the get the right direction there that's the whale and beautiful you know yeah kayla olson surface is a, has illustrated all except the very first one she is so she's, talented isn't she oh yeah i, I yeah. love her videos if if, you, if anybody here wants to have a go at doing a little bit of illustration work um have a look at um at kayla's uh videos um that they're, they're just amazing she's so talented and clever it makes me jealous <laughs> Oh, I did have I did have one other illustrator that was for this one. She painted. She did. Uh, Samantha Hinton was the one who did these pictures, and they are they're just gorgeous too. So oh yeah, I, she is yeah. just talented. They both are both very very talented ladies. Oh. Uh, Josephine says hello. Sorry, was otherwise engaged playing the comment game. <laughs> hello, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> she's so lovely and Wanda has joined us as well from uh, the 
Writers Rock group and the uh, Writers Rock Readers group and the Writers Rock Kids Zone group, which I shared your interview on all platforms. So hopefully we'll be having some little kiddies joining us as well. Um, Carrie says, I loved Terrific Tongues, <laughs> as did the six grandchildren that read it. They're, they're absolutely beautiful books. They really are. Um, did you have to do a lot of research? Um, well, for that one, because when I when I originally wrote the Terrific Tongues book, I just had the, what what amounts to the, to, let's see if I can find it. But yeah, just had the cats clean you and dogs slobber on you. And uh, things and and Chelsea and Kirsten said, "Well, oh, you know, I kind of you need could do some other things." So I had to research a lot. So there's facts then added to everything, so you can find out all about a penguin's tongue. And there's so there's something unusual about each animal's tongue, as well as human tongues, because on the one where brats stick theirs out, well, then I have some things about <laughs> about human tongues as well. So there's facts and just the funny little something about one tongue and then some facts about it too. So I spent a lot of time looking at everything because there's not any, you, you have to look through all the, you know, I'll look up through all the things about the cats to find out, well, what are some important things about their tongue? And you have to look all through all the things about the whale. And so that took quite a bit of stuff. <laughs> I think it's amazing. It, it, I tell you, it's crazy as writers, the things we have to research. I mean, did you ever think that 30 years ago, you know, oh, one day I might be Googling how, you know, all about tongues. <laughs> <laughs> it was beyond my imagination. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think it's absolutely wonderful. I really, really do. Uh, you know, the same thing about the Flamingo book. I, I had, well, this came from a grandchild saying, I painted a magenta flamingo. Oh. And then, so it, it contrasts the, the, the boys painting his flamingo and has all kinds of imagination. And while his sister has the facts. Oh, so, I, <laughs> I absolutely. Oh, so, you know, he says, my magenta flamingo feeds its periwinkle chick lots of tangerine juice. And my sister said that was silly. <laughs> she said everybody knows <laughs> flamingos feed their chicks with special milk made in their throats. So <laughs> it's fantastic. I love that dynamic. I mean, you, your books are just so engaging and um, and just so lighthearted, but but giving children knowledge at the same time without them even realizing it. I, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Oh, yeah. I just want to go through that because you've got six published at the moment. I just want to give their names so everybody knows the different books that you have available. So there's, um, let's have a look. There we go. So that's, that's Dave David's Pretzels. Oh. So that's an alphabet book with the pretzels being bitten into, into letters, which my son used to do. So all the letters are. That is so cute. Pretzels. <laughs> and I then the. I love that. I never even thought of kiddies doing that, but they do, don't they? <laughs> well, I, my son is a kind of an unusual kid, so. I hated and then an unusual tale is a kind of a fairy tale with a dragon and a knight and a princess. Oh, I love but that. They're, but they're not doing. They don't. They uh, all decide they don't like being knight, princess, dragon stereotypes, so they reinvent themselves to be dragon tours that is so cool uh, just for everybody who's watching um helen has very kindly offered to give away um a, a signed copy of an unusual tale to to our winner who shares her interview so after we've all finished or even now you can share what during um share this interview with Helen Holder, and you will get entered into a draw to win that beautiful copy of, of An Unusual Tale. It's absolutely stunning. And don't forget, the more times you share and tag us, the more entries you'll get. So you've got more chance of winning. Yeah. You're so lovely, Helen. You're so lovely. So which other books have you got there? Well, this one is Glorious Gertie's Fabulous Fireworks, which is just 
glorious Gertie's uh, doesn't make any sales for the 4th of July, but then she's able to save the 4th of July celebration because she still has fireworks left after the towns go to the bottom of the lake. Oh. Then I had a granddaughter who said to me she was going to take me up with her on her overnight. So we have sleepover with grandma. And oh. you don't you don't want this grandma to come to your house because everything gets very messy. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we've mentioned all of them now. <laughs> I think that's lovely. I'll tell you, I, I love your books. I absolutely do. As I said, they're so so fun and engaging and, and just full of knowledge. And I think the best way children learn is when they don't realize they're learning. <laughs> because, that's right. then, because then it's a positive, fun experience, isn't it? So I think that's absolutely fantastic. Um, now, what are your plans from now? I mean, are you hoping just to continue... Um, creating these beautiful books um, for children or are you thinking of you know maybe branching out a little bit to other ages How, what, what's your thought process on this well I probably will stick with children's books I have uh, written what well, I had in the in the Austin papers they have a yearly art thing that you can send anything in so they take it regardless <laughs> but I, I wrote an article about Amish friendship bread and how it enslaves you <laughs> and then um but mainly the, the next thing on the docket is i have a book already with kirsten kirsten's publishing company fox point and then i have to write a sequel to this one a number two for this one so oh something else for the dragon the knight and the princess to do so i'm working on that and then i have a few other ideas that are sitting there waiting for me to do something with them <laughs> it's just amazing now now what do you because you've you you've got grandchildren haven't you 11 am i right i have 11 grandchildren and one granddaughter-in-law so oh that's absolutely fantastic so what do your grandchildren think about you publishing these beautiful books well most of they range in age from 30 down to eight years old so <laughs> But the eight-year-old just posted on on Facebook. Uh, yeah, she had an earlier version of the terrific tongues, and so she she had a review of comparing the two, how, how they changed from my publishing to Kirsten's publishing, and ended up with it that they were just amazing. So. <laughs> Oh, that's absolutely fabulous. I tell you, it's a lovely thing, isn't it? I think for any children's book author um, is the fact that not only can your grandchildren or, or children read them, but it's just a continual thing because as they have their own children and grandchildren, it, it's, it's what a legacy to keep passing through your family. I, I think that's and the Well, the oldest grandson had wanted to uh, give... Uh, some people a new baby present. So he bought a couple of the books to give to the new baby. <laughs> oh, I think that's absolutely lovely. I mean, I mean, and what great advertising as well. I mean, when you think about it, for a children's author, um, your books are, are, are a gift that just keeps giving really, isn't it? As you said, with baby showers and Christmas oh, yeah. and, and all that sort of stuff, you can market it all over the place. It's brilliant. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I really, really do. It's, it's wonderful. Um, for everybody who's watching, if you've got any questions um, for Helen, just keep popping them up because um, we'd love to to read them and, and find out more about Helen. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, now, I believe, uh, and as you said, you had a little go at doing illustrations yourself. <laughs> it's something that I'm interested in, in having a go at. I'm, I've got to be honest because I'm quite... I'm an artist as well as a writer, but illustrations are quite difficult, aren't they? Because you're having to, it's, 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 I mean, it's art in itself, but it's quite tricky because you have to do it in such a visual way that it's going to really pop out to the kids and, and picking the right colors and everything else. How have you found that? Well, I just did the the David's pretzels, which is mainly 
animals, so I could I could kind of handle that. And it's one picture, and I don't have to be the same. But when you get to where you have people, or you need to have the same thing, page after page, then it's sort of like, oh, I don't, I don't think I can do that. So I'm glad to hand it off to somebody else. You're right, because a lot of it's angles, isn't it? And you're absolutely spot on. If you've got a character, and one minute they're facing this way, and the, and the, on the next page, they're facing that way. It, it's it's all these different, you're right, it's all these different angles and aspects that people don't realize you have to do. <laughs> right, I mean, they should look the same on this page one and page six, they should be the same so you can tell it's the same person. Exactly, exactly. I might have to practice a bit more, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> or if I have a picture to copy, then then I can kind of add my own things, but you know, who, who, if you, somebody has all the pictures you need for your book, then you probably should have hired them as the illustrator. <laughs> I, I know, right? <laughs> I tell you, illustrators are actually worth their weight in gold, especially oh, yeah. books, aren't they? Because they're as important as what you actually write. And it's, you've got to have such a good connection with your illustrator and, and who puts it all together and everything else, because it's a whole package. Oh, yeah. And and to have an illustrator and a designer work on how this is all going to go together it has just blown my mind at how how great how great that works compared to my trying to do it myself. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. I really, really do. I'm just about to publish my own set of fantasy books for kids and, and it, going from novels to, to ch children's books. Oh my gosh, it's so different, so different. Um, I, I, I'm planning on hopefully going down to Barnes and Nobles and that, um, just so I can actually physically see these books and decide which ones are closest to what I'm looking for in size and page count and everything else. And then I'm gonna have to buy a load of copies to take home with me just so I've got reference points. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. I uh, have way a huge library of kids books <laughs> I, perhaps i need to pay, pay a visit to you yeah house. that's right <laughs> <laughs> now kirsten is very kindly adding all the links um to the chat which is absolutely fantastic so thank you everybody for for clicking on the links and checking helen out um helen has got social media on most platforms so do go, like and follow her um, and she's also got Not very exciting posts though. <laughs> but you're getting there, my darling. I, I tell you, it's one big learning curve, all this social media. It it is crazy. And I thank goodness for you know Hootsuite and company, you know, apps like that where you can just post to one place and it just shares it everywhere. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it just takes hours and hours and hours. It really does. Um now, obviously, we're you know things are tough for all of us with the pandemic going on, and obviously, as having to do more online. Um, do you find that you're becoming more and more confident doing more author events and everything online instead of in person? Well, I can hardly wait for the in person because I haven't had any at all to speak of. I, I had one interview with the local um, bookstore. She does authors on their porches, so we could socially distance and and but she's somebody that I I know very well so that wasn't too hard and then I have uh, been to a two well now it's been three uh, zoom authors conferences which was so much fun I mean I started out and the last one okay I'd like to be on this see see this panel I'd like to see this panel and pretty soon I'm looking at all of them so I spent all two days and then, then they asked me to be on a panel, and it was like, uh, <laughs> well. Um, and then they, then they said it was going to be a workshop, and then that gets even scarier. But we managed to get through it. There were only two of us, two authors on it. Once she, um, another woman was a um, young adult, teenage fiction, and then I was the children held up the children's end. So we managed to get through our forty-five minutes without. Too much trouble. That's just fantastic. It's great though, isn't it? I think it's one of those things where the more you do stuff like this online, 
the, the less dramatic it is and less nerve wracking it is and right. you tend to get more comfortable don't you um oh my gosh I mean I remember when I did my first author interview and I was terrified I was holding my pen and I was my hand was shaking I was so nervous <laughs> but you do get used to it and I think that's you know that's that's great that you've gone on to do panels and everything else because it's such a great avenue for any author isn't it to get yourself oh, out oh yes and, and it's so much fun too all the people that make comments and the questions that they ask and it's just so neat to connect connect with other authors and to hear their stories and it's just been fun so far but i can hardly wait for the in-person ones that will be real even even more fun <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I think that's fantastic. And you've got great advantage as well, because I think with children's authors, um, there's always the opportunity to, to take one of your characters with you. You know, take the grandma from your book or, you know, right. <laughs> or, or ask, see if you can find somebody who's got one of the pets in your, in, in uh, the terrific tongues, tongues book and see if you can take that animal with you so kids can see it. You stick their tongue out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's such a great opportunity, isn't it? So to connect with those children on that level where they're actually seeing the characters. Um, oh, yeah. I think that's absolutely amazing. Um, Heather's just joined us. She says, hi, ladies. Sorry, I'm joining late. Better late than never, Heather. That's what we say, better late than never. Um, that's absolutely fantastic. I, I'm really, really excited for you to be able to do all these great events and everything. And and I feel for you because I've been in the same similar situation. Because even before the pandemic started, you know, I've got a daughter in school. Um, so I'm doing the school run and everything because she wasn't driving. So things like that make it very tough, doesn't it? <laughs> That's right. Your life interferes with what you want to do. <laughs> it does. It really, really does. And I find myself, uh, you know, writing and editing at ridiculous times of night. Um, you know, my husband will say, what time do you come to bed? Uh, three o'clock. <laughs> well, whenever I got done with what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, because you become so focused on it. And, and are, are you the same way when you get focused on a new book or you're actively doing something for your books? You just want to get it done. Oh, yes. And then, then you feel like this pressure. Of course, I set a high bar publishing a book every month. Now it's like, well, this is a big gap when you haven't done anything. <laughs> I know. Do you know, I, I, I think I've published mine like a year apart and and that was tough but you but you're right it is crazy but do you know what I think that um when you get given a time frame and a deadline I think that does help us more pro, be more productive well yeah, yeah. you you um, you know you have to go and get that done you can't just okay I go out and take a walk now <laughs> I know it's crazy. It is crazy. Um, we got. Oh, let's have a look. Uh, Kirsten says Helen will do great for the in-person events. I she, agree. She is a great booster, and she has great faith in me. I can tell. <laughs> do you know what? I have to say, she's a very talented lady because she picks oh, yes. authors that have, like yourself, who have so much talent. Uh, and and are so sociable and friendly and open and I think that is so fantastic because as we know you know people buy us first and our product second especially when you're doing it on social media um because they want to connect with us they want to you know get to know us see that we're friendly and welcoming and you know want to chat about our books um so I think that's I think she's absolutely fabulous I really really do um Wanda says, yeah, I did the same thing last June, a book a month. She did. She was a writing machine. I have to tell you, she was. I, I couldn't I couldn't load them up quick enough for her. Um, Carrie says, wait, stop the bus. You are writing one book a month? Question no, I already had those all written. I, they just got published one a month. That's the problem. Now I got to write one a month. <laughs> <laughs> just to keep up with the flow. Right. <laughs> So I've been lapsed. I haven't done anything for February and March and April. And I think the next one's supposed to come out maybe August, September. So fantastic. Now, 
out of the books that you've done so far, Helen, which one is your your personal favorite that you just love the most? I think I like Sleepover with Grandma the best. That, that's <laughs> I'm not really that kind of grandma, but she is she is a fun grandma for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so lovely I tell I, I, and I think it's lovely that you've created that book because I think most of us have got such fond memories of spending time with our own grandmas um you know I, I remember my grandma she, my grandma absolutely loved wrestling I mean proper wrestling I mean yeah. we're in the 70s and and I people that are from the UK might might remember this but there was giant haystacks was one wrestler and um big daddy was the other one and she, every sunday she would be glued to the television <laughs> so on her knee and as she'd get all excited because they were wrestling i would literally like bounce on her knee until i fall off <laughs> well and, and then a fun thing the library is going to have a uh, have the sleepover with grandma on a walk so that you walk along behind the library on that path or else out at the nature center and each read this page and read this page and the next one as you walk along so i think oh this is really going to be fun <laughs> oh that's fantastic well yeah. if it's if it's recorded if the event is recorded um and and shared please attach if you or all right Kirsten could attach the event to your author interview um that would be absolutely wonderful because I'm, I'm sure i wouldn't be the only one that would love to see that well, I just think what a fun idea, and I can it will be all I can do not to be standing out there with, <laughs> every day watching who comes by to see if they, if they enjoy it. <laughs> I think that's fabulous. I really do. I'm sure they will. You'd have to create your own like hashtag for the event. Right. <laughs> that would be so cool. That really, really is. Um, let's have a look. We've got some more comments here. Let's have a look. Okay, uh, Kirsten says, Fox Point is blessed with all the people we work with. I agree. I think you're all absolutely fabulous. Um, Carrie says, oh, okay, you make me feel like a total <laughs> slacker. <laughs> We've all got our own paces, Carrie. Don't worry, darling. We've all got our own paces. Um, Wanda says, I have one coming out real soon. She, yeah, but she's the one that's doing whoopee ding. So I, <laughs> well, right. She's a writing machine. She really, really is. Um, Carrie says that sounds awesome with regards to the uh, library event. I think that sounds absolutely wonderful. Um, Kirsten says a book walk put on by friends of the library. That's so cool. Um, we definitely need to share that if, if it, if it, you know, if it's a, an online event that's recorded or whatever, um, that would be great to share it, as I said, on your interview and on the Writer's Rock Kid Zone um, group that Wanda is the founder of, um, because we have quite a lot of children on there. So that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, Kirsten says, Helen is going to be on the front page of the newspaper again. <laughs> This is so cool. Honestly, Helen, it's not going to be long. And I think once everything starts opening up and everything, you'll have all these little kiddies coming up to you go, I know you. You wrote that book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I have, yeah, I have some of those already. So really? I have, a, I have one friend, a grandma, who's her kids said that her grandchildren said, oh, yeah, we have to, oh, you have, to, well, when is Helen having another book? We want another book by <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so lovely. Do you know what? I, the one thing that I wish that Amazon and other places would do, like Amazon Goodreads and everything, I wish they would all have a kids section for books because I think it would be absolutely wonderful if actually children were able to do a book review. Do, do oh, you know what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that would be absolutely fantastic if kids could actually go on and actually do like, you know, their five star review. I love this book. This book made me have good dreams or whatever they want to write. But wouldn't that be so cool? Oh, it would. Yeah. So, some of the one of the beta readers that Kirsten got for a, the Magenta Flamingo, the library had a flamingo, you know, get your yard flamingoed 
or you, you somebody pays to have something. And the little girl was so excited because she had a book about flamingos as well as all these flamingos in her yard. <laughs> oh my gosh, I think that's absolutely lovely. I, I tell you, kids, kids are just magical. They oh, really, yeah. really are. They just, they, they, just, their innocence and enthusiasm can just light up a whole room. And I think that's absolutely wonderful. I really do. Um, Kirsten says, Helen has groupies. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's so cute. Um, and I tell you, the other nice thing about your books um, is the fact that the illustrations and, and the covers and everything are so beautiful. Um, you could definitely have those images on, you know, the merchandise so children get another little connection with them. Um, and I was saying this last week, you know, my son was was mad on like, Thomas the Tank Engine and, oh, my gosh, he went through the biggest Teletubby phase. It was ridiculous. Um, <laughs> and then he went on to the Red Power Ranger. He wore, He went to nursery school as the Red Power Ranger <laughs> for months. And I'd have to wash his outfit <laughs> at night so he could have it to wear it the next day. And after like six months plus, it was falling to bits. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, I I came to well, I, I I was a teacher for several many many years before I was a was a parent, and so I always say, you know, it was like when I was just a single teacher, then I knew what to tell these parents how they should how their kids should dress or whatever else. And then I became a parent and I just commiserated with the parents instead. <laughs> Changed my conferences totally. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Because you're absolutely right. Until we have our own children, you don't realize you know, the thing, the rings you have to go through to, to, to keep you, your kids, you know, happy, um, full of life, engaged, and everything Which else. battles you have to pick? I mean, okay, so you want to go to school wearing Power Rangers. Okay. I'm going to fight with that one. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're going with clothes on. Let's take it. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you know, it's so funny you say that, Helen, because my, my youngest, um, my youngest boy, um, um, he spent the first five years of his life butt naked. I would get him dressed. I'd make him look nice. He would look all smart. I'd send him out to play with his brothers and sisters, and then I'd look out the window to check on him, and he'd be quite naked. No, come back, get your clothes back on. <laughs> oh yes. Oh my gosh! I tell you, kids, they they do and say the funniest things. They they absolutely do. Um, oh, I thought I'd lost you again. Then Helen, it started going all weird again. <laughs> Oh, well, must not be. So far, I'm still good. I don't know. <laughs> I know it might just be my end. Um, so what do you think has been the most amazing thing that you've experienced or learned through your through publishing your books? Just just the whole process of getting something published, and just whoever dreamed that your illustrator and your designer, I mean, I didn't even know there were designers and your editor, they're so important to you. Yeah. And if yeah. you want to have a good product, you really need lots of eyes to look things over. It's not just you, so. Uh, I agree. How I, I wrote something and how it came out when it gets into the book is, Wow, thank you, all you people that worked on this. <laughs> so how did you feel when you held your first book in your hand? You know, your first publication. Was well, it like, it, oh. yeah, it's like oh, oh, what my goodness, look at how beautiful this is. <laughs> and here it is right here in a book and people can buy this and look at it too. <laughs> It's just amazing, isn't it? I tell you, it's an amazing experience. And I, and and do you know what? I I love the fact, Helen, that you you taught children for over thirty years, and even after doing all all of that, you're embarking on a fantastic new career. And it just goes to show that you know anybody of any age can still chase their dreams of publishing and going for it. 
Um, I, I think that makes a massive difference, doesn't it? Because let's face it, when you're working full time and, you know, bringing up your own family, you've barely got time to go and get a shower and brush your teeth, right. let alone publish books. But it just goes to show that even after a great career, you can still have a new career and make that change. Oh, yeah. And if you've got this idea that you will give it a whirl, I mean, what's the worst going to happen? You could be back to where you were with nothing, but you may have something. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Get out there and try it. Exactly right. Exactly right. And I think people need to remember that there's so many people out there who did make career changes or, or, or start a new career, you know, after they finished having children and everything else, who have been massively successful. So, it, you know, there's so many role models to be seen. Helen, you have been an absolute joy to talk to today. I, I Your books are just beautiful and amazing um kirsten is very kindly put all the links on in the chat as well um and everybody please don't forget to share everywhere because every time you share helen's interview you do get an ent entry into winning her beautifully signed book um if you could hold that up again that was an unusual, an unusual tale there we so go. It's unusual because the knight and the dragon and the princess are fighting the stereotypes of fairy tale knights, dragons, and princesses. So that's just fantastic. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, the signed copy is going to come direct from Helen. Um, and she's very kindly said she'll send it anywhere. So sure, obviously, why not? <laughs> Anybody can share and get an entry. Helen, thank you so much, darling, for joining us. I truly appreciate you spending time with us today. Um, thank you so much. And thank you, everybody who's been watching. Um, just to let everybody know, I will be away next week. So all three interviews will continue the week after. And yes, I have had all my hair cut off on everybody it's all gone ready for the summer um helen thank you my darling and i really hope you will come back and join us again maybe later on in the year well i'd love to i i, I this is one of the other advantages you get to meet wonderful people and i think oh my goodness i just enjoy the witty writers show so much and it's such a fun interview with all the other people that you've had i i'm Honored to be here. <laughs> oh, thank you, Don. Do you know what? The honor is absolutely mine. It really is. Now, would you mind just keeping tabs of the comments for the next week um, for people who can't join us live but want to engage with you and ask you questions? Um, right. If you can just pop on every day just to have a look at the comments just so you can react and, and respond to people, that would be absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much, Helen. Oh, thank you. And we will see everybody in a week. Thank you for watching, everybody. This was the Witty Watchers Show. Bye for now.